How many opportunities have you missed because you were afraid to take the leap? Playing small isn't just holding you back. It's preventing you from living the life that you deserve and it's robbing the world of your greatness. Hi, I'm Limo and this is Thrive, where we cultivate our minds because as farmers of our thoughts, we create our lives. A lot of us think that success is out of reach because of the circumstances that we find ourselves in. But the truth is, playing small and avoiding risks is what is preventing us from living the life that we truly want for ourselves. We self-sabotage in many ways, many of which we don't even recognize. So in this video, I'm going to share with you how you can begin to shift this mindset and I'll provide strategies that you can implement that will help you begin to live the life that you truly deserve. I've personally struggled with this for a very long time. I found myself getting in my own way and preventing myself from reaching the greatness that is within me. And it is through these strategies that I'm about to share with you that I managed to shift my mindset and start living a life that is truly fulfilling to me. So I'm about to share these strategies with you. But first, it's important for me to iterate that I am not a mental health professional. And the things that I share here are not a treatment plan, nor is it medical advice. I'm simply sharing insights that have helped me in the past with the hope that they will help you the same way. And with that, let's get into this video. So let's start by discussing what exactly is playing small. Playing small is operating in your comfort zone. It is avoiding risks and rejecting opportunities that come your way, which you very much deserve. And you avoid them for a myriad of different reasons. And I also want to emphasize that when I speak about success, I'm not necessarily talking about things like fame or monetary success, like the things that we normally talk about. What I'm talking about is you living a life that is true and authentic to yourself and you living a life that is successful in accordance to who you are, in accordance to what you define as success for yourself. So it's obviously going to be very important for you to get to a point where you understand what success looks like for you. But before we can get there, I first want to talk about what actually prevents you from attaining and obtaining the things that you desire for yourself. And the thing that gets in your way is fear. You're fearing the outcome of you putting in the effort to go after your dreams. You're fearing the outcome of you doing the work necessary for you to get to where you're trying to go. And there's generally five things that you're avoiding when it comes to your fears. There's generally five outcomes that you're avoiding, and these are backed by research. And I want us to go through this research together, but I'm gonna share it below for you to read if you're interested. So the five outcomes that we're generally avoiding are number one, feeling embarrassed or ashamed. Number two, having a diminished self-worth. Number three is experiencing uncertainty about our future. The fourth one is that the people who are important to us will lose interest. And the fifth one, which is actually pretty big, is that important people in our lives will respond in anger or will be upset. So you fearing the outcomes of you pursuing your dreams is actually very real and it makes sense. You exist in a community and as part of a community, you need to meet certain expectations. You have certain expectations of yourself. So of course, you have these fears. Not only that, it's not pleasurable to go through these things. It's not nice to go through these things. But the thing is, on the other side of your fear is your greatness. And that is what this fear is robbing you of. This fear is robbing you of reaching your greatest potential and being the greatest member of society that you could be. It's robbing you of doing the greatest things that you could possibly do. And we need to overcome this. The cost of your fear is your success. And like I said, success is what you define for yourself. And throughout our lives, we are taught to pursue certain things because we are told that that is what success is. We're told to go to school, for example, and get a degree and get a job. But that may not be what you define as success for yourself. And even if it is, there may be other things that you want to do that you are not doing because they bear the risk of you facing these outcomes that like I've established, you fear. So how do we actually move forward? What do we actually do to ensure that this fear does not debilitate us and prevent us from reaching the greatest potential that we could possibly reach? So if you're sitting there and you constantly feel like you're not ready to do certain things, or you feel like you're not capable of doing certain things, or you're fearing the responses that you're gonna get from other people when you pursue certain things, how do you actually get beyond that? And the first thing you're gonna have to do is to reflect and to actually ask yourself, what are the different ways that I am getting in my own way? What are the different forms of self-sabotage that I am constantly practicing which are keeping me stuck where I am? 
And what you're gonna start to realize is that the biggest obstacle that you face is yourself. The biggest obstacle to the outcomes that you desire deep down within you is yourself. And when I say it's yourself, I mean that it's your mindset. It is the mindset with which you're approaching these things. All of this fear that you're facing and the fact that it's debilitating you, the fact that it's getting in your way, it's all a mindset game. And you're gonna have to learn to turn that fear around. You're gonna have to learn to turn that fear into fuel. You're gonna have to learn to turn that fear into something that actually spurs you forward. And so to turn that fear into something that actually pushes you forward, this is why reflection is very important. You're gonna have to stop being afraid to look back at your failures, for example, and analyze what went wrong and how can you move forward. So there are three things that are gonna help you shift your mindset that I'm gonna recommend. The first one is affirmations. You need to learn to watch yourself talk. So watch how you speak to yourself. Watch the things that you say to yourself. Start saying more positive things to yourself. Things like, I am capable of doing this thing that I want to do. And when it comes to affirmations, I'm not necessarily saying lie to yourself. I'm saying start speaking positively to yourself and believing in your capability to achieve the things that you want to achieve. And a second thing which will help with your mindset is for you to reframe your failures. Stop looking at failures as things that define who you are. Stop drawing your self-worth from whether or not things work out or they don't. Failure, as I often iterate, is an opportunity for you to learn. It's an opportunity for you to grow. It's an opportunity to figure out how things shouldn't work so that you can one day figure out how they do work. Failure is a part of the process that allows you to grow and become even better. And failure is where your character is built for you to become the character that is capable of attaining the dreams that you have for yourself because that is something you have to work on, that is something you have to develop, is the character that can sustain the dreams that you have. Because the current character that you have is not one that can sustain your dreams. You have to build that up. And part of the way that you build that up is through failure. And another great way to start to shift your mindset is by surrounding yourself with great thinkers, by surrounding yourself with big thinkers. This is where your circle becomes important. It's important for you to surround yourself with people who will feed your dreams, people who will believe in you, people who will encourage you. And on that note, nobody owes you belief in you except you. You're the only person who is responsible for your belief in yourself. And it is your responsibility to not seek that from other people, to not seek that validation from other people, but to start drawing it from within and also to surround yourself with people who feed into that, but not expecting it from anybody. And this is particularly for people, for example, who are in relationships or who are married, for example. Don't expect your spouse to be there to support your, your every dream. It is not their responsibility to do that. Don't expect your friends to be there to support your every dream. Don't expect your parents to be there to support your every, de your every dream. It is your responsibility to find people who are willing to do that, but you cannot expect it of anyone and you cannot put anybody in a position where they feel compelled to support your every dream. They don't have to, but you need to find people who support your dreams. And another thing you need to do when it comes to surrounding yourself with people who think big and feed your dreams is for you to consume content such as this. Watch the content that you're consuming. If the content you're consuming is not feeding your dreams, you need to cut it down and start consuming more content that is going to encourage you to actually start to pursue the things that you believe for yourself. But look, I'm not going to sit here and make you think that mindset is all it takes for you to start living a fulfilling life. For you to live a fulfilling life, mindset is but a foundational aspect of it. A very important thing that you're going to have to do is take action. Because your mind is like an operating system. And as you may know, when it comes to a computer, it is the operating system that helps the computer to run. And when the operating system has viruses, the computer cannot run at its best. The computer may not even be able to run at all, depending on the virus that is there. And your mindset is that operating system. And there are certain actions you're gonna to have to take to get rid of the viruses that are getting in the way of your operating system, which is your mindset from functioning well. And that is why action is very important. So there are three steps that I'm going to recommend that you take in order to start taking the action necessary to genuinely start seeing your life become more fulfilling. And what you will see is that it's very important for you to be intentional. 
because you cannot rely on motivation or spreads of inspiration for you to get to where you're trying to go, for you to get to the point where your life is fulfilling and you're living the dream life that you have for yourself. You're going to have to be intentional about this and you're going to have to do it whether or not you feel like it. So the first thing I'm going to recommend is blocking out time. Blocking out time each week to look back at the week that was and seeing where did things go wrong? Where did things go right? What worked? What didn't? What were some happy distractions that came into my life this week that actually helped push me forward? And what were distractions that were actually getting in my way? This way, you're able to start dealing with all the things that are getting in your way, all the things that are preventing you from getting to where you want to, and you're also able to start figuring out what you can add in order for you to start moving forward. And so by taking time each week to reflect, you're giving yourself that opportunity to see where the system might be failing and to also see what you can do to help push the system forward. And similar to that, with the time thing, you're gonna to have to dedicate time each day to being creative because you are creative. There is a creative force inside of you that wants to come alive. And when I speak about creative, I'm not necessarily say talking about making YouTube videos, for example. Creative for you could be you want to start an orphanage. If you want to start an orphanage, you're going to have to be creative in many different ways in order to make that become a reality. You're going to have to create your life. You are a creator. You are a creator and you need to start allowing that creative energy to flow through you. And the thing you will realize is when you do want to start pursuing your dream, when you do want to start pursuing the thing that you want for yourself, obviously it will be intimidating because it's very big. And so the second thing you're going to have to do, the second action you will have to do on a regular basis is to break your dream down, to break your goals down into small actionable steps. It's going to be very important for you to take small steps. And in order for you to do that, you have to identify what those small steps are. And you're going to have to be learn to be OK with the fact that you do not know all the steps you're going to have to take. A journey of a thousand miles starts with one step and you do not know what obstacles you're going to face. You do not know what challenges you're going to face, but you know what you can do right now. You have right now what's in front of you and this is all you can work on. And the rest is faith and trust that deep down inside of you, there is a divine energy that is guiding you and directing you and it will make a way and make a plan for you whenever you do eventually face an obstacle and face um, challenges. But you have the responsibility to take the action and the action that you need to take is taking whatever small steps you can take right now so going back to that orphanage you may not know how to start a whole orphanage and how to make sure that it runs legally and all of the jazz that comes with running an orphanage but you can decide that on a saturday you will dedicate one hour to go and volunteer at an orphanage and maybe sit with people who run that orphanage to see what works and what doesn't so that is an example of a small action that you can take in order to start making your dream a reality you know where you're going eventually you don't know how you will get there but right now the bare minimum you can do is start volunteering at an orphanage and the third actionable thing that will become necessary for you is accountability. Having accountability set up. And accountability can come in the form of people. And like I said, do not expect this from certain people, but find the people who are willing to hold you accountable. Because people may love you, but they may not necessarily be in a space or be willing to help you in terms of being accountable. They may not have the capacity to do that. But you will have to find people who are going to be able to hold you accountable. And you're also going to have to hold yourself accountable. And that is why having systems is important. And this is the foundation of having good systems. Because you're going to have to figure out your operating system how does it work best what makes it work best because I'll give you an example I've been diagnosed with ADHD and I can get recommendations on how to handle and deal with with my ADHD but then I have come to realize that not everything that is recommended to me will necessarily work for me even if it's worked for other people who have ADHD so you're going to have to figure out what works for you and what doesn't because you are your own operating system you have your own files inside of you you have your own desires and dreams and things that you're working towards and you're going to have to find what uniquely works for you. And by establishing these systems, you're ensuring that at the very least, even if you do lose your way, 
you'll be able to get back on track. That's what accountability is all about. That's why you reflect, for example, that is part of accountability. It's for you to be able to look back and know, okay, here I messed up, here is where I could have done better, this is how I'm gonna move forward. Here's something I see that could perhaps be done better, this is how I'm gonna do it better. Accountability helps you to establish all of that. So eventually all these systems come together and they start building the life that you want that will really be fulfilling for you. These systems help you to start knowing where and how to adjust in order for you to get closer and closer to your dream. And with every single step that you take that moves you closer to your dream, you are making progress. And again, progress can look like 10 steps back, as I've said in a previous video, but progress is still progress, even if it looks like 10 steps back. So the next thing that's very important for you to do is to know exactly what it is that you should do, to know when something is for you and when it's not. And there's a video on screen right now that I want you to watch because it will help you know exactly what it is that you should do and what it is that you shouldn't do, what it is you should stop doing in order for you to start living a life that is truly fulfilling. But otherwise, have a wonderful day and thank you so much for watching.